Okay, boys, welcome back to your favorite format of having class, of having your history class. Welcome back to YouTube, yes. So, okay, that sounded too much as a YouTuber, right? I'm sorry. But, yes, we're back to YouTube here. Uh, now it is time to study the 9th century, but, well, there is a surprise for you here, because this is not going to be quite a class of the 9th century, but it will rather be a summary of what we have studied, because I don't know if you remember, but the 9th century is kind of special over here. Uh, within the Middle Ages, the 9th century holds a, a very special place. So, um, let's start over here. Uh, as we usually do, let's just start by uh, analyzing our last card, the last card that we were able to produce about the 8th century. Uh, the 8th century is basically, as you can see above, uh, two things are going to be happening. From one side, the Arabs are going to be happening, and from the other side, the um, Carolingian dynasty is going to be happening. So, from one side, the Arabs are going to be conquering Spain, then there is going to be a change of dynasty. Remember that the Abbasids are going to be killing the Umayyads and are going to be replacing them in the throne of the Caliphate. And finally, remember that the last uh, surviving Umayyad is going to escape towards Spain and is going to uh, declare the independence of Spain and is going to be founding the Emirate of, of Al-Andalus, the independent Emirate of Al-Andalus, that of course will not be ruled by the uh, Abbasid Caliphate. It is going to be independent from the uh, Caliphate and the rest of the Islamic State. It is going to be a new Islamic State that is Spain. And these two beautiful stories are going to be joined precisely uh, in the Islamic expansion and how the grandfather of Charlemagne, that is Charles Martel, is going to be stopping uh, the advance of the Arabs in the Pyrenees, in the Pyrenees Mountains, uh, right in the border between Spain and France. Uh, so basically, that is uh, what is going to be happening from the side of the Franks. Uh, first, Charles Martel, that is going to be uh, Charlemagne's uh, grandfather, is going to stop the Arabs in the Pyrenees. Uh, then there, we are also going to have a change of dynasty, because after the death of Charles Martel, uh, then Pippin III, that is going to be Charlemagne's father, remember that he overthrows the Merovingians, and now the ruling family in France is not going to be the Merovingians anymore. And remember that the Merovingians are the first ruling family in the Frankish kingdom. They come from Clovis himself. Uh, and finally, of course, Charlemagne is going to be named uh, by the Pope Leo III. He's going to be named the new emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, of the new Roman Empire. So if you see our card, we are proposing that the century starts in the 711 when the Arabs enter uh, the um, uh, the, the uh, Spanish Peninsula when they enter Spain and they are going to be defeating Don Rodrigo, the Visigoth and the kingdom of the Visigoths is going to be over uh, precisely when the Muslims, when the Arabs enter Spain. Uh, then we have the Battle of Poitiers uh, where, um, well if we start analyzing the events, we have the Battle of Poitiers where the uh, grandpa one grandparent of Charlemagne, Charles Martel, is going to stop the Arabs. Then we have Don Pelayo. We are reading this over here. Then we have Don Pelayo that is going to be the only one escaping from the uh, from the uh, pursuit of the Arabs. He's going to be the last Visigoth standing, and he's going to be founding the Kingdom of Asturias in the north part of Spain, the last remaining Christian territories in Spain. Uh, then we have that the Umayyads are going to be murdered by the Abbasids, so the Abbasids take their place in the Caliphate. Uh, Al-Andalus is going to be considered an independent emirate. Charlemagne is going to conquer Italy. Remember that this is important because the Lombards had invaded Italy after... Um, after the Byzantine Empire defeated the Ostrogothic Kingdom. Remember that these lands of Italy were ruled by the Ostrogoths. And once the um, Justinian, the Eastern Emperor, defeated the, the Ostrogothic Kingdom, then uh, the, the Lombards are going to take uh, advantage of that vacuum of power and they are going to be conquering Italy. Uh, and after that, we have the Battle of Roncesvalles, where uh, Roldan is going to be uh, killed. Remember that he was the nephew of Charlemagne. 
And finally, uh, the century ends in the year 800. Why? Because uh, it is the year in which Charlemagne is going to be crowned Western Emperor. Uh, so that is basically the process going from the Islamic expansion, how the Islamic expansion got all the way to Spain, and uh, starting with the foundation, with the beginning of the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, So the century is more or less a 90-year century. It is almost a, a medium century. It's kind of short, but almost a medium century. Okay, but right now, and this was the surprise that I was going to tell you. Ta -ta -ta -tan. Uh, this is... Uh, the the surprise that I was giving you because remember that the ninth century is very special if you remember in here we have this um, kind of sticker that is going to be remembering us what we have already studied the Middle Ages is divided into two more or less halves the early Middle Ages or high Middle Ages and the late Middle Ages or low Middle Ages and uh, precisely the division between these two periods is going to be the 9th century. And you should remember this very well. Remember that the Middle Ages start in the 5th century when Alaric sacks Rome. And then we have this division in the 9th century that is going to be characterized by two things. Uh, one thing is going to be precisely you have here a picture of Charlemagne. Why? Because Charlemagne is going to be founding the order the structure of the feudal institutions and the structure of the feudal society that is going to be happening throughout Europe for the rest of the Middle Ages. Starting from the 9th century and all the way up to the 15th century, the structure of society is going to be given by um, the design that Charlemagne is going to be applying into the Frankish kingdom and in the Holy Roman Empire, because now he is the emperor of the, of the West and uh, also the viking intrusions so it is the century now where we're going to have Ratnar Lothbrok and uh, well Count Roland is going to come one century after uh, but also Bjorn uh, Ragnarsson, Ragnarsson that is going to be invading the Mediterranean and finally uh, this period that starts over here in this century that we are seeing today is going to end in the 15th century uh, when Constantinople ends and then we're going to have the discovery of America and we're going to have the discovery of the southern part of Africa and we are also going to have the beginning of Protestantism and that is going to mark the beginning of the modern era. Uh, but now this is the, the Middle Ages and we are reaching the first, uh, the first border within the Middle Ages. So let's have a, a brief review because uh, I am thinking that it is better if we have a quiz, uh, sorry, a quiz of the early Middle Ages and then a quiz of the late Middle Ages than if we have a quiz of the whole Middle Ages. Because if we have a quiz of the whole Middle Ages, those are 10 centuries. And if we just have a quiz of the early Middle Ages and then one of the late Middle Ages, we have uh, more or less a quiz of five uh, and a quiz of six centuries, more or less. Uh, that would be, I think that is better. So uh, I think for you that are first C, you the boys, uh, I think that you will be having this quiz next Friday, precisely, precisely in this session. So that is the first class uh, of your next Friday. I think uh, we will have a quiz about the, uh, the early Middle Ages, okay? It is better to have it this way than trying to have a quiz about the whole Middle Ages. Okay, so uh, let's have a recount, let's have a summary so you can help yourself study. However, I would recommend you to study all your cards. Your cards are the secret to pass this trimester and to get a 10 this trimester. Actually, once we return to school, I have uh, made all my numbers. And once we return to school, what we are going to be doing is basically using all our cards because I am, I am thinking that more or less by that time, we're going to have all the cards all the way up to the 20th first century so that is up to our days up to today I think that more or less by those days we're going to have all those cards so the rest of the days that we have of class what we are going to be doing is just doing memory games and we're just going to be doing quizzes about all our 16 centuries that we are going to be studying this trimester but today we finish with our uh, first four centuries and we are presenting our first fifth uh, part of the fifth century so let's have this summary about the uh, four centuries uh, that 
are making up the early or high Middle Ages. Uh, remember that the 5th century may be thought of as the Visigothic uh, century, the, the century of the Visigoths. Why? Because remember that it starts uh, when Alaric the Visigoth is going to be invading um, Rome, is going to be sacking Rome in the Western Empire, and uh, that is going to be causing a lot of issues. Afterwards, his, um, his nephew, no, sorry, his grandson, Theodoric, is going to be uh, fighting Theodoric the first, not Theodoric the Great. Theodoric the first is going to be uh, fighting against Attila, and he's going to be rehired by the Roman Empire to fight their, ba their battles. Even after they sacked Rome, they're going to be rehired as, as Fuederati, and they're going to be fighting the fights of Rome. Mm, and then uh, remember that the, the kingdom is going to fall, that Odoacer is going to depose the last Roman emperor, that, uh, well, actually the last emperor de facto, because remember that we had two, we had two emperors. One emperor was de facto and one emperor was de juris. The emperor de facto was um, Romulus Augustus, the second Romulus. Uh, he was the ruler de facto because he was the ruler chosen by the army. But there was uh, another ruler that was uh, the ruler uh, by law, the the actual uh, error of this of this empire. Uh, but however, the we can consider the end of the fifth century that started with the sack of of Rome. Uh, by Alaric the first, we can consider it to end when uh, well we have two options when Odoacer deposes the last emperor that is Romulus August uh, yes Romulus Augustus, or we can and that is in uh, five hundred and seventy six if I'm not wrong, and we can also consider the beginning of the uh, fifth century when we have the beginning of the Frankish expansion, when Clovis becomes the king of the Franks and he begins the Frankish expansion. So uh, the transformation will be more or less this one. The, the fifth century is going to start with the two empires, with the Eastern and the Western Empire, and it is going to end with all of these small kingdoms that are the barbaric kingdoms. Uh, we're going to have the Visigoths here, that remember that the Visigoths were the ones that sacked Rome. Then in here we have the Vandals, uh, over here we have the kingdom of Odoacer, and over here we have the Ostrogoths, and remember that uh, in the next century the Ostrogoths are going to be conquering Odoacer. Uh, then we have all these small kingdoms over here. We have France, but we also have uh, the Alami, the Alani, sorry. We also have the Burgundians. We have a lot of small kingdoms. And uh, over here we also have um, this, um, well, this, this eastern territories that are going to be still populated by other peoples like the the um ba the um Swabians and the Alans. Yes, Swabians and Alans and they are going to be uh, just playing a role here in the eastern part of the empire outside of the borders of the of these kingdoms and we're also going to be having we are still going to be having the eastern empire this m more purple color is going to remain by the end of this century so we're basically going to have we're going to go from this division of the empire in the eastern and western all the way up to the barbaric kingdoms all these big variety of barbarian kingdoms okay uh, then by the sixth century as we were saying we may consider that in uh, 486 when clovis the first becomes the first king of france uh, the, the, the Franks are going to be expanding and they are going to be conquering all these different uh, kingdoms. They are uh, even going to be conquering a territory from the Visigoths. And remember that Alaric II is going to be dead here. He's going to die in the battle against Clovis. And so uh, the, the Visigothic kingdom is going to be losing all these territories over here that used to be um, of their property. And also uh, remember that um, uh, Odoacer is going to be uh, killed by, by Theodoric the Great. 